There is one question which I get quite a bit. How long does it take me to learn, react or whatever it is? And in this video I'll try to answer this, though I'll be very honest, there is no exact duration for this, but I might still be able to help. So how long does it take to learn React? What would you say? Well, the honest answer probably is that there is no duration you can assign to this. There are way too many factors affecting this and it also is important to define what you mean by learn React because it's not like a recipe, a cooking recipe which you'll learn. And even that, by the way, will probably take a bit longer than just the amount of time you need to read it. But let's have a look at some of the factors which are important when we speak about learning something. And there I'd say of course, obviously, it matters whether you already have some prior experience with that topic or not. Is React, and of course that's just one example, you can replace it with PHP, with JavaScript, with Laravel, with Angular, with Node, whatever it is. So is the thing you're learning is that brand new to you or have you worked with it years ago, for example? Have you seen it? Have you seen some talks about it on a conference? So is it brand new to you or not? Obviously that's a big thing because if you already know roughly what React is about and how it generally works, then learning it will be way faster. Now it should be a no-brainer, but it's important to keep that in mind. When you ask someone how long something takes to learn, you need to provide that information. Do you already know something about it or are you a complete newbie? Now then, it's not just the topic itself, but also related topics. Let me come back to the React.js example. If you're learning React and you have never touched it, you never read anything about it, or not that much, but you know how to work with, let's say, Angular, then it will not take you as long to learn React as it does for someone who's brand new to web development. Because even though React works totally different than Angular or has a totally different syntax and a different approach, some core ideas are the same. You work with components, you build a user interface, you will need to manage some state and whether you do that with state or the state hook or with properties and classes, that might be a different approach, but the goal is the same. So it will be way easier for you to understand some core principles of React and how it incorporates those if you already have experience with related topics. And of course, that's not just true for React and Angular, it's the same for Node and let's say PHP. If you're diving into Node to build a server-side application, then there are many, many, many things that are different than they are in PHP. And some things might even be hard to translate or to understand if you're new to, to Node.js. But there also are similarities. Some problems you have to solve in PHP are problems you'll have to solve in Node.js. Something like managing sessions or cookies. The general idea behind that is not something you have to learn again. You just have to learn how it's implemented with Node.js. So that's obviously important. And programming experience in general helps or experience with the, the topic or the, the area you're working in in general helps. If you want to learn, let's say, Power BI, which is a tool, uh, business intelligence tool provided by Microsoft, if you want to learn that and you have never worked with it and you never worked with Tableau, which is a competitor, but you might have worked as a business analyst, maybe with Microsoft Excel, then a lot of the things you can do with Power BI will be familiar to you. The way you do these things, the way you solve problems, that's new, that's what you have to learn, but you don't have to learn everything from scratch. You don't have to learn why you're interested in a certain report or in a certain uh, statistic. So that's the same for programming, of course. If you got some programming experience and you're learning, let's say, a brand new programming language which you never had a look at before and which is all the brand new to you regarding the, the problems you solve with it. Let's say you're learning Node.js and all the experience you have is with Python and you haven't used that for server-side development thus far. Well, then this whole server-side thing is new to you, but things like variables, if statements, and all of that, that's not new to you. So you don't have to learn that from scratch. Obviously that matters. And last but not least, 
or the last important point that comes to my mind is that of course the affinity you have towards programming or towards the, the area of the topic you're diving into, that matters of course. I would say that everyone can learn how to code, that's absolutely clear, you don't have to be particularly skilled for that, but if you have a stronger affinity towards that, if you've been that type of person who always had a look at the, the editors of video games, let's say, so the level editors which some video games provided, if you always had a look at that, then you always were kind of attracted to this world of coding and of getting uh, into the behind the scenes stuff. And then you will probably have an easier time learning uh, a proper programming language thereafter. For me, that was how I got into coding. I always started messing around with these editors and in video games you could work on the past. Like let's say for me, that was Operation Flashpoint, which had an amazing tooling for building your own missions and so on. And I always worked with that. And that's how I got into programming or how I accelerated my, my programming learning curve. So I think these are some factors that matter. But even if all of these factors are clear, the duration it takes you to learn something depends on what you mean with learn it. Because it's not just one thing or there is not just one single definition for this. Here are some possible steps you could uh, think about when we talk about learning a new topic. And that's now not from some objective study or not an official document. These are just some steps I came up with. And when you learn something new, be that a programming language or be that, let's say, a tool or whatever it is, I'd say that the, the first step you typically dive into is that you have to gather some general information. You have to get as much information about how it works and how the syntax looks like, which features it has, and so on as possible. You don't have to dive into every detail yet, but you want to get the big picture, you want to build some basic things. And for that, you would typically use tutorials, official documentation, some blog articles, things like that. That's how we all typically learn, I'd say, and that's the important first step. Now, after that, or in combination with that probably, you also want to experiment with your knowledge. You want to build some, some basic, very basic dummy projects, dive into some examples, maybe have a look at some official code examples so that you get a feeling for what you do with that knowledge and how you apply it. And you will then also encounter first problems which allow you to get a deeper understanding of why you do something in a certain way or that you might need a, an alternative to that approach. I would say that is the, the basics part of learning something. And after that, you probably have a first understanding for the language or the tool or whatever it is that you learned, but you certainly didn't master it. You certainly are not an advanced user or developer, but you got that basic understanding. If that is your goal, the learning process is over now. And that is then, well, the duration you can measure. But of course, the way time it takes you to learn this depends on the factors which I mentioned. Now, most of the time, you don't want to stop at this point. Maybe you're fine with the basics, maybe you just want to get a rough understanding, but maybe you also want to dive deeper. You really want to become a Node.js developer, let's say. Well, then you don't stop here, but you progress. The logical next step is to deepen your knowledge. And that means you now dive into the nitty gritty details. You have a look at the API reference of the documentation. You dive into advanced examples, into the advanced parts of tutorials, and you continue building stuff. You continue facing problems and you solve these problems with Google, with Stack Overflow. So that's where you now get a deeper understanding for the language or for the framework or for the tool which you're working with. That's the part where you now really become an advanced or you're on the way to becoming an advanced developer, I'd say. Hand in hand with that, you then typically also start to explore your own dummy projects, more complex projects, maybe still focused on certain aspects, but still more than just a simple button which you can click which then opens a window. So you start exploring and experimenting with the knowledge you gained, you dive into some advanced niche cases. That process, of course, will take way longer than the basics. Getting a big picture, getting a first idea, that's possible in a, a relatively short amount of time, depending on your prior knowledge and these factors I outlined, of course. But now getting an advanced developer 
encountering certain challenges and so on, that will take way longer, obviously. Now, last but not least, or also simultaneously to the other two steps here, to these advanced steps, I'd say, you also typically dive into the community, maybe not actively, maybe by only reading on Stack Overflow, diving into the GitHub repository if we are working with the open source technology so that you stay updated what's happening there, what they're changing, what the new next version will bring, uh, which issues there are. Maybe you also contribute, you post issues, you help on issues, you provide pull requests, you help out on Stack Overflow. And that of course also is an important part of growing and of getting better better because by, well, by diving into problems, you really get a deep understanding. You'll learn about workarounds, why something works the way it does and how you can become better, how you can grow. So which amount of hours would I now assign to each step? How long does each step take? Well, it would be nice if we could provide an answer here, but to be very honest, you can't. It depends on all these factors I outlined. It depends on the technology you're working and it depends on your goal. If you're happy with the big picture, you can probably get that for most technologies, most languages in, in a couple of hours if you have some prior uh, no programming experience, let's say. If you're brand new to programming and you're learning a programming language, your first programming language, it will certainly take you longer than that. It will take you a couple of hours, certainly, uh, maybe dozens of hours, because you have to learn everything from scratch. So really, unfortunately, there isn't a clear label you can, can assign to these steps, a clear amount of hours. But there is one thing. I sometimes also get messages like, hey, I got an interview next week. Uh, I need to learn, let's say, Angular. Um, how long does it take? What should I focus on? Well, first, if you got an interview next week on Angular and you don't know anything about it, I'm not sure about the recruiters you, who invited you or I'm not sure about your, your resume because it sounds like you kind of lied there. And if it's a role where Angular knowledge is expected, you should maybe think about getting it before you are invited. But that's just a side note. So if you're now in, in a pressured situation, if you need to learn it fast, well, then obviously there's no time to dive into all the advanced stuff. Instead, you focus on the basics stuff then. And there you can, of course, get that big picture in a short amount of time, just skip over the docs, learn a lot of things by heart so that you maybe don't fully understand them, but you hope that in the interview it's enough to learn them by heart. And obviously it will depend on the person having uh, you, you have the interview with, whether that suffices or not. It might for a lot of interviews, but it also does, it might not for, for others. So learning by heart, getting that big picture, that might be enough. And if you're, for example, needing that knowledge uh, as quick as possible for, for a project you have in university or somewhere else, you can, of course, also get away with copy and pasting some snippets, which you maybe don't fully understand, but which do the job. And therefore, you might be able to get an application up and running with a rough basic understanding and some copy and paste examples. Now, it's needless to say that neither of these two things, even if you combine them, makes you a real developer. And whilst you might master your interview with that, whilst you might complete your project with that, if you plan on continuing as a, let's say, Angular developer or whatever it is, you should also dive into the advanced part because otherwise it's just like, like cheating and at some point of time, you'll probably not have success with that. So the whole learning process is something you will then still have to go through but you might be able to get that first rough idea in, in a few hours. So yes, that is possible if you have at least some prior experience in a related topic, uh, but if you really want to learn it in the sense of, I want to be a good developer, I want to feel confident using it, well, that, that will take you certainly way longer. And actually, I'd say it's a process that never ends. You might be confident in, uh, in using that after a certain amount of hours. That might all be the case, but learning never stops. And that's not just a phrase. It is the way it is. Uh, everyone continues learning because also there are new patterns and new packages, new approaches emerging all the time. So that never stops. If that's your goal, programming in general might not be your thing. So that's it. That's my, these are my two cents on this topic. 
Uh, obviously, if you came here to get a clear amount of hours, uh, I'm very sorry for disappointing you. I hope that these steps and factors still help you judge how long it will take you to learn something on your own so that you have a realistic estimate and a realistic expectation of how long it will take. Hopefully see you in future videos too and all the best in whatever you are learning at the moment. Bye.